So, what's good? Matt Clark here at the new Matt Clark. How are each and every one of you doing on this amazing Tuesday? I'm doing great. My girl's doing great. My family's doing great. Hope each and every one of you are doing great. And I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. If you could please hit that like button, subscribe button, and that bell notification button to get all my videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word, that'd be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help support the channel. The link will be in the description of this video. So what's up, what's up, what's up? How are each and every one of you doing? It's been a minute, but I'm back. And I feel like I want to talk about a list. It's been a minute since I've done a list. And <clears throat> I think when you think about provincial jail, everybody just thinks about the time. Nobody really thinks about anything else, right? But for this video, we're going to do a list of the 12 things that make provincial suck the most and will make you plead out quicker. It is by design. I'm telling you, they're not going to tell you that, but it is by design. The worst things about prison living, and I'm going to start off with number one, and that is the smell. The minute you walk in, you smell it. Whether it's B.O., whether it's rotten food, whether it's sweat, whatever it is, the minute you walk in, the smell just going to boom, and it's bad. I'm telling you, in provincial, it is bad. The air gets stagnant, and it's gross. Only time you're not going to smell that smell, probably, is if Piff is in the building and they're burning the place down. Then they might open the fans up, they might air it out, or you might just smell piff bl like blazing everywhere and that is actually a good smell cause compared to what you would normally smell in a provincial jail. Like you gotta remember, you get two jumpers a week, a few pairs of boxers, few pairs of socks, like the showers are crap, the soap is crap, everything is crap, plus people are exercising and working out all the time. And it's just stagnant air. You're like in a in a fishbowl. So it's boom. So number one thing that will make you be like, man, I just got to get out of here and go down to the pen and probably plead out before you should is the smell. It's not the worst. This list is no specific order, but it's something that you'll definitely notice. Number two on this list for me, and it doesn't matter really if you're in provincial jail or federal although in federal it gets a bit better and it's the bed and i know it's jail blah, wah, 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 and i never complained about it this is just a list of the things that i think makes jail suck the most and one of these things is the bedding situation whether it's no pillow whether it's that plastic little thin mattress or the striped fire retardant mattresses that end up being about this thick after you lay on them for a week. You will 100% end up with back pain if you do any consistent amount of time. I know they say sleeping on harder things is better for your back. But I was in those cells for months and months sometimes lock up <clears throat> and lying on mattresses like that. And just being like all day long. And just having like fire radiate down my back. So the bedding situation definitely sucks. Um, the sheets are like freaking, they're really, really, really starchy. It, it just makes your time a little bit more difficult. And like I said, that's by design. So number two is the mattress and bedding situation. So number three on this list, and it is terrible. And that is the fluorescent lights. Now, it doesn't matter if you're in provincial jail, the lights are on all the time. There's just levels to it. So during the day, the fluorescent lights will be pumping. They will be, you know that sound that you hear if nobody's making any noise? You will hear that sound all day long. You will get headaches. Your eyes will hurt. And it just, it literally makes you crazy. And at nighttime, all they do is dim it a little bit. 
If you cover your light or put a, a sheet up beside your bed, a lot of COs are going to wake you up in the middle of the night and they're going to make your life difficult. I remember most of the COs and Lindsay would be cool about it, but the white shirt, Mr. Coleman, I don't know if anybody knows him, big bald headed dude. He would come around sometimes at night and he would wake up every cell. He would turn the light on in your cell if you don't wake up and you'll wake up at like two o'clock in the morning and your light will be humming and i know the light is on anyways but it's different like imagine having like five costco lights blazing in a six by eight that is your life you could almost get a tan from the, from those fluorescent lights so number three on the list that makes provincial life terrible is the fluorescent lights they just they just get to you they make it difficult for you to sleep they just make it difficult for you to concentrate sometimes, and they can suck. Number four on this list of things that I would say make provincial jail suck a little bit more. And this is the worst one on the list for most people. Not for me, but for most people, and that is the food. Now, some provincial jails are better. If you're up in the country somewhere where your jail has 15 or 20 people, chances are the food in that place is going to be better. But if you are in a super jail situation, then it's going to be schlop. Whether it's salmon surprise, whether it's spaghetti, whether it's everything is a schlop. And all the meat is either diced up into little cubes or fake processed stuff. The cold lunches are horrible for the most part. You get a bunch of just meat just log cut off of some crazy shit that has cartilage in it. Like half of the shit you can't even chew through half the time. It's like boot leather. You're not going to want to eat it. But sadly, when you're in provincial, your day goes by the food clock. Like that's, that's how my time went. I didn't have a bunch of people throwing money into my account. I did have some canteen, but I didn't have like money flood. I couldn't just have commissary for like stacked up all the time. So... For me, I had to eat the food a lot of the time, and I got used to it, but oh, I'm telling you, the provincial food, especially in the super jails, is horrible. There's a couple of meals that'll taste okay, and then it'll pass. A few of the breakfasts, like the Sunday morning breakfast, which is three uh, breakfast sausages, eggs, and cubed potatoes, and then the Thursday morning breakfast, which is an omelet with cheese, oatmeal and cubed potatoes the tuesday morning breakfast which is three little mini pancakes with maple syrup those meals all taste pretty good i probably eat them right now to be honest <laughs> but i'm not a super picky eater i eat to live i'm not like a foodie typically unless it's like something amazing so number four on the list of what makes provincial suck and will probably make you want to plead out and take a federal sentence just to get out of there rather than do a bunch of dead time, is food. Now, number five. This is something that I don't think a lot of people take into consideration before they go in or anybody talks to them about, but it's the noise. Like, the noise is constant. People are screaming. People are fighting. People are fucking talking shit. TV is screaming full volume. There's people smashing on the doors, there's guards screaming in the thing. If you're in SEG, there's screamers. They're called screamers. So even if you're like up in segregation where you're locked away by yourself and you figure that you would at least get a little bit of time to sleep while you're serving your time for your misconduct and you get screamers up there that are just constantly screaming and kicking the door. Sometimes it'll seem like you never get a minute of peace, except in most jails from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. is quiet. Sometimes you'll be on a young range where they don't really care about the rules and there's enough of them where they'll just jump somebody and smash them if they have a problem with them making noise. But for the most part, in most places where respect is passed out, 10, 11 o'clock at night, the noise will pretty much shut down. People will stop flushing toilets and everybody will go to sleep. But that's not always the case, you know. Now, 
<clears throat> that's number five, and that's the noise. And it sucks. I'm telling you, it does. Now, number six on this list is something that people think about all the time. It's a major threat to anybody that's going to jail or to prison, and that is violence. And the, the reality is that it's a reality. If you go to jail, you are going to experience violence in some way, shape, or form if you're in there for longer than a couple days. Or if you go to prison, you are going to experience violence in one way, shape, or form. Whether you see somebody get severely hurt, whether you're involved with somebody getting hurt, or whether, whether you get hurt. It doesn't matter. Some way, shape, or form in your time, you are going to see or be involved in violence. And it's not always easy to see. Sometimes violence can get out of hand. Sometimes people lose their lives. Sometimes there's really severe, severe beatings and brutal violence. And it can be hard on the mind, especially if you haven't already been conditioned to that by prior time. Like... Me, I was conditioned kind of like throughout my childhood or teenage years and early adult life to the violence and it progressively got worse and worse and worse. Like, Tyak was the most violent place for sure that I had done time, but it wasn't the most severe violence when it happened. Like, maybe occasionally somebody gets smashed with a squeegee or get like a toothbrush shank in the face or something. But most of the time, it's fights or jumpings and they get broken up right away because there was feds on the range. So although it was really violent and cracked off all the time, fights were short and didn't really last. And then you move up into the provincial adult system and it gets a lot more extreme. And... It's not extreme everywhere, you know. Some places you can go into provincial and do easy time. But if you're in the city, if you're in an urban area, and I don't care what city it is, you're going to have gangs, you're going to have drug dealers, you're going to have violence. Any time you have 500 to 1,000 or 1,500 people or even 2,000 people in one jail or prison, violence is going to be high. It just is. When you have a lot of idle hands and idle time and stress, this is a bad combination. So you're, like I said, you're in a fishbowl. You got nothing to do with your time. There's no school. There's no, like, gym you can go to. Of course, you can work out, do push-ups, calisthenics, body weight stuff. People will make water bags and stuff. But they don't really offer anything to burn the stress that men have, especially when waiting pre-trial, or women actually, waiting pre-trial and aren't even convicted yet. I mean, it's kind of ass backwards that when you're not guilty and you're sitting waiting to be found guilty is the more harsh punishment. Once you're actually sentenced and found guilty, they send you to a place where you can do fairly comfortable time. It's kind of backwards. By design. It's all designed to push people through, and this is my opinion, the system faster. And if everybody's stressed and shaking it all the time, they're just going to want to plead because everybody's always talking about how great the pen is. Oh, I don't care if it's a year. I'm taking three in the pen over a year in provincial. I don't give a shit. This is how people talk. So guys are like, oh man, I should just plead and go. But no, don't. Don't just accept federal time over provincial time, especially when it's a big difference in time just because of stuff like this. But it does suck. And number six is violence, you know, and uh, whether it's like direct hardcore violence or bullying or people getting punked off for their food, whatever it is, it's not fun. And like sometimes you're on the, the side where you're taking stuff from people because prison is a dog eat dog world and sometimes you got to do what you got to do but if you ever are on the receiving end of that it can't be fun you know like i grew up in the system so only early on in tyac did i really ever have any issues but like i could understand or see it being really fucking scary coming through an adult prison the first time or whatever and trying to fight for your food and trying to get people to give you a little bit of respect and dignity so you can talk on the phone or you can take a shower. This can be a real problem for guys. You know, I don't think people understand, but a lot, a lot of guys can be difficult with that. So, so number six, the violence. 
Now, number seven on this list is the COs. They're definitely worse in provincial than they are in federal. In federal, they definitely give you more respect for the most part, and they know themselves a little more. They know, they understand that the, the population is prepared to be violent. But for some reason, in most provincial jails, they don't see it that way. They think that they need to be fucking hardcore and ruthless and treat you like you're a piece of shit. And it's super disrespectful. And it actually surprises me that COs don't get hurt more often by inmates. They do get hurt all the time. But, man, I've seen some feds be disrespectful to guys. I've seen feds straight up bitch slap guys across their faces. Power slam guys. Jump guys. Kick the fuck out of guys. i also seen guys smash cards. So it does happen. But you'd expect to see it more often considering how much disrespect goes on. Now, when you, even in federal, it does happen. Like, you guys know about my riot. That all kicked off over a petty young officer who had his ego hurt who felt like he had to come in and flex on us seals i don't know man in provincial they're way worse for the most part if they come in they do their job they go home they're just there to earn their paycheck they know the punishment is the time and there's no reason for them to exact their own punishment on you so number seven thing that sucks the most about provincial is the motherfucking COs. Now number eight. Now this sucks about every provincial jail that pretty much I've ever been in. Especially ones that have massive populations. So if you're in Lindsay or the West. Or not the West. The Hearst or the South or in Penetang. Anywhere where there's like a thousand plus people. You're going to constantly deal with shortage of staff lockdowns and it's bullshit because you never know when it's coming unless they're you're in like a streak where it happens every day you could have important phone calls to make to your lawyer you could have plans to make to try and get bail and then boom you're locked down for shortage of staff and then they're running a shower program and you're not really part of the mandem so you don't get out this is this kind of stuff is gonna happen you know and <clears throat> you could be a totally cool guy and land on a block where you're brand new on the block. You don't know anybody. It doesn't matter. Like, you're going to have to work your way up into those levels of respect. And that's just how it goes. There's a hierarchy in prison, and you have to show where you stand. But lockups are constant, whether for violence, shortage of staff, whatever situation it is, searches, exceptional searches for weapons or drugs. You're constantly dealing with lockdowns and bullshit. So that's why I put it at number eight on the list. There's not a whole lot to talk about. Just you'll spend like one third of your time. And I'm not talking about when you're sleeping, like in lockup at nighttime. One third of the time that you're supposed to be on the range, you're going to be locked up at least. Most likely if you're in any of the super jails, for sure. And that's something you have to deal with. And that's definitely one of the things that makes people want to plead guilty and get the fuck out of provincial. So number eight, the lockdowns. Bullshit. Now number nine on this list also is something that you don't deal with everywhere. But when you do deal with it, it really sucks. And that is three to a cell. Sometimes they'll have somebody literally on the floor underneath a table or with their face beside a goddamn toilet. Like, it's crazy to have people sleeping in those conditions, but they do. And it's something that when I was in the West Detention, when you're in the Don Jail, and these are even smaller cells than the Lindsay cells, there's always somebody on the floor. And sometimes it creates fights. Sometimes it creates issues. It's just another thing for people have to to have to create a hierarchy over and could possibly cause issues in a jail and that is three to a cell so number nine on this list three to a cell hopefully if you're ever in that circumstance when you do go to court for sentencing they actually consider you for two for one or sometimes even three for one like they did occasionally back in the day when people were trapped in the dawn so Number 10 on the list of what sucks the most about provincial 
and will make you plead guilty and run away to federal and just accept some bullshit sentence rather than do like a year in provincial. And that is lack of programming and or resources. So whether it's it's eight weeks to get a dental appointment. If Even if you have a, an infected abscess that's ripping your face out. You're like, ah, all the time. Like, it doesn't matter. You're going to wait. If you need to see a psychiatrist. If you need medication. Do you want to play sports? Probably not going to get any sports. Maybe there might be a little rim outside on the wall. And when they let you out to the yard for 20 minutes, you might be able to throw a basketball around. But aside from that not going to get any sports in most provincials no weight rooms maybe if you're on the uh, sentence side you might get a universal machine and the chance of you even getting on that range if you have any misconducts or anything like that slim to nil so i would say lack of programming and or resources and that's also like rehab like say you you want to join a program and, and improve yourself so that you can go to court and show them that you've improved. You can, you know, they might have like a chaplain come in and do a, a once in a while, but there's no real programming. So you're really just sitting there warehoused, wasting time. And this is time that could be used. And these convicts and inmates could use to improve their lives, whether it's going to school, going to college, um, doing program seeing psychologists whatever it is this lack of stuff is definitely one of the reasons why guys boogie to the pen uh, you know even something like ost like say somebody's got a major drug issue and then they come into the to the uh provincial system and they say listen i need methadone or i need suboxone no so now they're buying drugs they're running up debts and they're making themselves in danger when the jail could have just offered this it's offered to anybody in the community that wants it that pisses dirty so why not and that is something that in the federal system they will do for you and this will also make people so number 10 lack of programming and or resources just makes provincial suck just a little bit more. Number 11 on this list is that you are in limbo. So what does that mean to me? That means that you don't know what's going on. You know, you're waiting for court dates. You're waiting for um, information. You're waiting for uh, pre-sentence reports. And then even if you go to a pre-trial, now you have to wait for a prelim and then you have to wait for a trial. And this can literally in Canada take years and it'll make you crazy. People will be going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, thinking that they're going to get bail. They'll like dangle hope out in front of you and then yank it from you. Like this is the system like I said, it, in my opinion, it is designed here to frustrate you, to make you kind of lose it a little bit and push you towards pleading guilty. And there's a reason why the courthouses in Southern Ontario have such high conviction rates. It's because of that reason. Nobody wants to sit down for two or three years in Lindsay waiting for a trial when they could plead guilty, go down for two or three years, get out in a year on parole and do easy time, eat better food, play sports, but they don't realize what they're doing to their record. Like I just realized I can't get a pardon now because I've had three federal sentences, three indictable offenses where I've been sentenced to more than two years. No pardon. That sticks with me forever. And that is my consequence. This is something that I have to deal with. And I'm prepared to deal with, I guess, it just sucks. You know, some places I won't be going, you know, at least not legally. No, I'm kidding. I won't be going. Like, I'll probably never get to be able to go to the U.S. unless I do a waiver. I'll never be able to go to Australia or New Zealand. I'll never be able to go to, um, there's a lot of places like China. There's a lot of places that you can't go. It's like 14 countries. So, number 11 on this list is that you're in limbo and you just don't know what's going on. And... Even like once you're sentenced, like say you're waiting for parole, right? Like you could get parole and literally have to wait two, three months before you get out. And you don't know which day it's coming. It just, just happens one day. 
So it's like everything is just designed to kind of mess you up. You you have this this you go through this stress for months and then they shoot you out into the community hoping that you fail. Then they put you in a halfway house right in the middle of a drug center. This is like you can't tell me it's not on purpose. But number 11 on this list is that. And number 12 on this list is court. Court. Court and the paddy wagon. Now, I used to go to Newmarket Court majority of the time, and there'd be like a hundred people there in these tiny little bullpens. Everybody's like standing up like this. You get a little tiny sandwich. Everybody's farting. Everybody's stinking up the place. There's fights. <laughs> it's just a crazy day. And you sit there and stand there all day hoping that maybe you'll get a little tidbit of information. But 95% of the time, they put you over and you have to go back to the joint and do it all over again. They wake you up at like 5 a.m. in the morning and then you go sit down in the bullpen, which smells like rotten food. You get some shitty breakfast, a little thing like this, a cereal and a couple pieces of bread. And then you go to court, they give you one little shitty sandwich and on your way to court, you're in a metal hemorrhoid causing paddy wagon. It's just a terrible, terrible day from start to finish. And sometimes you can be there all the way to like 6 p.m. And then you have to take an hour and a half paddy wagon back to Lindsay. It's just brutal. So I'd say number 12 on the list of things that just suck, especially if you're like going through trial or prelim where you're going to court every day for six weeks or eight weeks or even three weeks, the paddy wagon ride and court. It sucks. So hopefully by telling you guys this list and sharing this with you guys, you guys know that you don't want to do none of this. Obviously, I share my stories with you guys and my opinions so that you don't. Obviously, I went through so many things in my life. And if I could just snap my finger and nobody goes to prison, nobody deals with addiction, that's what I do. But that's not a reality, especially in 2024. So hopefully my videos can inspire people to change. If you could please hit that like button, subscribe button, and bell notification buttons. Get all my videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word. That'd be amazing. And there's a PayPal option. I'll leave the link in this video. I love y'all. This is literally just the worst things about provincial. And can you argue any of those? Those things will make you crazy. And it'll make you say, oh man, I can't sit here for two years waiting trial. I'm just going to plead guilty. Maybe I'll get less time. Maybe I'll get a little bit of more time. But whatever, it's better time. It'll feel faster. And you're just fucking yourself. And they know it. So in my um opinion you should just wait it out man wait to try out fight as many charges as you can i mean if you're dead to rights you're dead to rights but fight as many cases as you can man and and try to keep your record as clean as possible i love y'all the new matt clark